Welcome to MediaBistro.com's video show, Media Beat. I'm Joe Ciarallo, editor with MediaBistro.com, joined by Lockhart Steele, who's the president and founder of the blog network Curbed. Lockhart, thanks for joining us today. Hey, great to be here. Great to have you. Um, and you oversee a blog network that has a number of blogs, Curb.com, Eater.com, Rack.com, GridSkipper. Um, That's it, yeah. <laughs> and you, uh, all those properties. You actually uh, you know, started out a couple years ago. You were working uh, full-time as a managing editor at Gawker Media. Tell us a little bit about your time there and sure. where the blogs were launched during your time. Sure. Well, I Gawker. actually I used to be a magazine guy back in the mm -hmm. early part of the 2000s. Um, I was the managing editor of a magazine called Cottages and Gardens. And I picked up blogging just as kind of a hobby back like in 2000, 2001, when it was just still kind of a weird thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and somehow the group of us that were blogging in New York at that time kind of got to know each other. Mm -hmm. And then Nick Denton, who founded Gawker Media, rolled into town mm -hmm. and kind of took us all out to coffee and hired some people and started some blogs like Gawker. Um, and so it was about 2004, I was still working in the magazine world. And Nick came to me and said like, hey, you know, my network's growing. Um, I think a lot of what we're doing here on the blogs is actually not that different in terms of running an organization from the way that magazines and newspapers have always been run. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to have a weird career sort of skill set intersection where I was pretty good at managing people in like a managing mm -hmm. editor type role in the magazine world. Also, I knew a lot about blogs and kind of loved that world. It actually started Curbed as a hobby um, about six months before I joined Gawker. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went, came on board when Gawker was about like 12 editorial employees. And I think when I left, it was like 150 or something like that. So wow. it, was, it was a crazy time and crazy growth. And it's just um, obviously the company has just gone from strength to strength since then. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a crazy job and a great company to work for. So inquiring minds want to know, what is it like working for Mr. Denton? I, have, I loved it. I mean, there are people, it was, obviously it's the kind of thing that either kind of takes or it doesn't. It's sure. sort of like, a, like an organ transplant. Um, yeah. In my case, I, I loved working for him. I think um, you know, Nick has a certain public persona um, mm -hmm. More people sort of see him as this dark overlord. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, he's an incredibly creative guy who tends to see web trends coming um, faster than most people. And working for him was really fun because he would come into the office with literally like a new idea every day. And mm -hmm. you know, a lot of those ideas, the first time I heard it, I would be like, "That's crazy! You know, we're not, we can't do that." Then you sort of think about it. It's like, "Well, maybe, maybe we could do that." And you kind of realize, like, actually, we should do that. So I had like went through that process more than a few times with him. Um, but yeah, I still have a good relationship with Nick, and I think he as I said, for all of his um, public posturing or public imaging as uh, the sort of goonie man of the blog world. He's <laughs> obviously like the guy who's the reason we're all here in a lot of ways. And you launched or you started working on Curve, you mentioned, while you were still at Gawker. How did you find it was kind of crazy. To, to, were you I was sleeping? A, or? I, was, I, mean, I, was a, I, I loved doing Curbed. It really played. I founded the site because I have a fascination with the way neighborhoods sort of evolve and change. Mm -hmm. And that's where, the, that's where the concept came from. Um, so I was doing it. You know, actually, that magazine job, kind of around the edges, I would come in early in the morning and blog, and you know, around lunch break, sneak in a few blog posts. Like other people, like everyone wastes time on the job in different ways. I guess my way of wasting time on the job was blogging for another blog. So there's been, uh, you know, Nick decided to, to get rid of Gabriel um, and bring in Remy Stern, acquire City File. Yeah. What do you make of Gawker in its present form? And a lot has been written and talked about with that. Yeah, I mean, I know the players involved. I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to speculate too wildly. Sure. I think. Um, you know, Nick has, uh, Nick always has an idea for what he wants Gawker to be next. Mm -hmm. He's always thinking about it, and I think it must just be that, you know, he had a vision for what he wanted it to turn into. I mean, Remy has been in the sort of the orbit of, uh, you know, the, the blog world for a long time, and I think City File, obviously, he built into something, um, you know, in a way that, to me, was reminiscent of what Gawker kind of used to be back in 2004, 2005. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that sensibility mixes with, you know, the fact that Gawker's purview now is a little bit wider. Sure. And you, what are the, has been the biggest change for you in going from the managing editor role to now uh, the founder publisher of your own network? It's a big difference. I mean, it's a big difference to realize that you're in charge and there's no one else to sort of whine to or bitch to or mm -hmm. complain about. Um, I mean, I happen to love it. I think it, it, the real challenge is just um, kind of being up every day and really staying in touch with your whole company and kind of know what's going on. You know, I'm an editorial guy at heart and I love, I, I love being really engaged with what's happening on the blogs, but for me, part of the job is also you know, going on sales calls with our sales team, talking to our investors, um, things like that that are skill sets that I've had to build and, and learn. And you've seen, I mean, you've seen all this progress. You said you know, starting off in the print yeah. magazine world and you know, working at Gawker, launching your own network. Do you think 
it is harder to launch a blog or a blog network today than it was maybe yeah, four or I five mean, years ago? Oh, definitely. I mean, just because just the amount of noise on the internet has increased so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, back when blogs like Gawker were launching, or not Gawker's not a great example, but let's take like Gizmodo and Engadget, the two mm -hmm. biggest gadget blogs. You know, when Nick Denton launched, launched Gizmodo, that was 2002, there was just nothing like it. And there wasn't anything like it for years. And now, you know, a site like Gizmodo is doing 100 million page views a month. It's really hard, and as a team of, you know, 15 great bloggers who know the tech world inside out. Mm -hmm. Really hard, I think, to come in and try and compete in that space. And so you've seen people get into nichier and smaller and smaller spaces. Um, and now the small spaces are so, I mean, are fairly crowded. But last question, I also wanted to ask you about, you're known in some circles as, uh, for your work with the Farmer's Almanac, uh, <laughs> the, the guide to fish. Did you uh, check uh, the boys out on their, their reunion tour? I did. I was, a, this summer? I was a big fish fan back in college and uh, self-published that book in, 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 my, in my waning days of college and right when I got to New York in the mid-90s. Uh, I'm still a fish fan. I saw a couple shows this summer, but it's not quite the obsession it once was for me. Sure. Cool. Well, Lockhart, thanks for joining us in part two. We're going to dive uh, more into Curbed, your, your company, and this is MediaBeatShow.com's MediaBeat. Media Beat.